Hey everyone. Hey, hey, and welcome to After Hours here at Linda's Electric Quilters. We are excited that you are here with us tonight. Corey has an amazing thing to show you. Yes, I want to show you how to block a quilt the way I do it. Mm -hmm. And just because it's the way I do it doesn't mean it's the only way that it can be done. Exactly. Um, I've just grabbed a bunch of different techniques as I've learned throughout the years and kind of combined them all into one. Uh -huh. uh, and this is what's worked best for me in my process. Yes, and I, it's a cool process. I watched him go do... <laughs> I can't even talk right now. <laughs> Watched him going through the process, and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I wouldn't even thought of doing it that way. But you, at the end of the project, it'll turn out awesome. It's a stunning, beautiful, flat laying quilt that's wonderful for wall hangings and a must for show quilts. Oh, for sure, for sure. I, I think we should just go show them. Alrighty, so let's head over and let's take a look at starting out the process. Alrighty. So some of the products that you're going to need to block your quilt are going to be one, of course, the quilt that you're wanting to use. Um, the second thing that you're going to want is some foam insulation boards. I already have the products and the quilt laying on those boards right now. Um, these foam insulation boards are four foot by eight foot, and I'm using the half inch thickness. There are varying um, thicknesses that you can use. I like half inch because it's just easier to move around. Um, but with those foam insulation boards, one sheet of a four foot by eight foot will give you the ability to roughly block a 36 by 82 quilt. Two sheets is going to give you an 82 by 82 quilt or anything lower than that. Three sheets will give you an 82 by 130 quilt or anything lower than that. And then normally, because uh, having a quilt that's 130 inches long, um, it's probably going to be a little wider than 82. So your fourth sheet, you could cut that into thirds and put it along the side. And that will then give you uh, the ability to block 124 by 130 inch quilt. Another thing that you'll use for blocking is your corner laser. Um, I got this one off Amazon. I'll have the link in the description below. Um, it has these little tab uh, push tabs in it that you can put in the corners to keep the laser still. Uh, that way, whenever you're blocking the quilt, it doesn't shift. So you're keeping your perfect straight lines. Um, I use some corsage pins to tack it down. And then I have a spray mister bottle because you want to get the quilt relatively um, wet, not like super duper wet, a little damp. Um, it helps you to move it around, stretch it, and to get it to lay flat. And the last thing that you need, you won't see it here, is a fan, um, some sort of isolating or oscillating fan uh, to keep the air moving in the room. Since you're getting the fabric wet, you do want to keep air moving so nothing happens to the fabric um, during the course of it. So let's get the laser light set up, turned on, and we'll get to blocking. So I've got the laser light up to the corner of the quilt. I'm going to go ahead and start misting the fabric. So I use uh, probably two bottles of water mist on this as I go throughout the process. Just misting it enough to get the fabric nice and damp around the sections here. And then I leave this bottle over to the side. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my laser light. And that's going to give me the lines that the quilt needs to be uh, blocked up to and squared up to. And if we roll a little bit to all the way down the edge there, you can see just how far off this quilt is and how much it needs to be blocked for this instance. So we'll come back and I'm going to go ahead and take these little pins that this laser comes with and plop them in and they just push right into the foam board again just to keep the laser nice and still. Just like that. And then I'm going to take my first pin and get this quilt nice squared up to that laser and I push it right in the fabric and I push all the way down. Um, I'm on the floor right now with these. If you have tables, you can put your foam boards on the tables as long as the tables have enough stability um, over all of the foam board. Uh, and you can get around the whole thing. That's the big part when you're doing small pieces like this. You might not be able to get around it all the way. So just keep that in mind before you get started. And then I'm just going to start working one way or the other, completely up to you. Um, because this side up here going this way was so bad. I think that's where I'm going to start first. So I'm going to hop over there and I'll start pinning that down. You can shift and move the fabric as you need. And then I would recommend pinning probably every inch, uh, especially with this one. This one needs a little bit of love. So you're just taking those pins and you're plopping it right between the binding and the actual quilt. 
Um, I bind the quilts before I block them, just because sometimes I find after I do binding, if I block the quilt prior, it ends up stretching back out of shape. So I want it at its final stage before I'm gonna block it. This is a time consuming process, but it makes the quilt lay absolutely beautiful for shows, for walls, or if you're having it as a showpiece across the, your bed. And we're gonna end up right here at the corner. We'll put one right there in that last corner piece. And then we'll move over back to where we started and we're gonna go up that other direction. Okay, back over here to the corner where we originally started. I'm gonna hit this with some more mist. So I'm gonna move my pins out of the way that are in the box here. Don't take the ones out of the quilt. Just hit this with some more mist just to get it ready. Because this is such a thin, light mist, um, sometimes it evaporates by the time you get to one other side. So just hit it again with another piece. And then what we're gonna do, take our pins, grab the quilt, get it to lay nice and flat. Because this quilt is so heavily quilted, um, it's got a lot of movement in it and that's the reason for this blocking. So we wanna get this nice and straight, even if we have to give it a tad bit of a tug. I don't wanna overstretch it, but I do wanna do a tad bit of a tug on it. So lining that binding up with the laser, doing those pins about every inch as you go. One little tip that I would like to add um, is make sure you pull your um, fullness kind of through it. Don't stretch just from the binding. Kind of move it in and that helps it lay a little bit flatter so you're not just stretching unevenly one section. Make sure your hands are clean before you do that though just in case it is a white quilt. Um, you don't want to get it dirty, especially having water on the quilt. Okay, coming up here to the corner. And the corner's starting to fade a little bit into the laser, so we're just going to push the quilt back just a hair to get it in line. And then still come through, putting in our pins as we go. And I'm running close out of pins here, so I'll have to grab another set. Um, because I'm using so many and that's just the little bit of the process that this takes. So last one right there in the corner. So that's going to be this line. We're going to jump across. So about 45 degrees from the initial corner that we started and we'll go from there. So just to give you a visual of what we just did together, we started over on the corner over here and then we worked up that right side and then up the left side when we did that section, but those are the pins that we have. And now we're on this opposite corner, right over here. We have our laser down. Now when you get to the opposite corner, what you have to do is you need to turn on your laser and get your laser line to match up with both of the corners. So you've got a corner over here that you've already pinned, and then you've got a corner over here that you've already pinned. So those lines need to match up in order to get your perfect square. So it takes a little bit of finagling and a little bit of doing to get it done. But once you get it, then you can pin your laser down. Um, or if you don't have the little pins for your laser, at least put some uh, corsage pins down around it so it keeps it from shifting all the way. So we're gonna turn on our laser and get those lines to match. Now that we have our corners matched up, we'll go ahead and lock the laser light down. But you can also see how far off this quilt is to be square, just based on how far we had to pull out the laser to get the corners to match. So we're gonna start off with getting our corner first. Um, again, we're gonna hit it with another slight thing of mist all the way over the quilt especially the side we're working on first, but just to get the whole quilt nice and damp, having that fan running in the background, just to keep some air moving. And then we'll pull in our corner, pull in some extra, there we go. Once you get your corner exactly where you need it, hold it in place, grab your pin, pin into the corner to hold that nice and steady. And then you're gonna work 
looking from that angle, we're gonna work to the right, pan that all the way down, and then come back and work to the left. So as you're approaching one of your corners, you start to get a little bit of fluff in the quilt. That's natural, but you do want to kind of feed that in as you are uh, pinning this down. That's going to help you stop from having a big blop at the end. So you're just kind of feeding it in ever so slightly to each inch increment that you make. And by the time you get to that corner, then it's going to lay really nice and flat. And that's just something that you're going to check periodically as you're working. The first two sides, you don't have that issue. But as you do the other two sides, you start to run into it. So it's just something to watch, kind of pull it into each section as you're going across. And it'll stop you from coming up with one big piece at the end. Because you don't want to remove these pins when you get to the end to make it flat. Because then you've taken the quilt out of being square. And we're coming up here to the end, making sure we're staying nice and straight. One last final one or two. You can do as many as you want, or we'll do two right there to finish in that section. So then we'll head back to the corner and work our way the other way. Coming up here to our last corner, always remembering to kind of pull in some of that fullness to get it to lay nice and flat so you don't end up with a little plup at the end. And we're just working our way all the way down this. One last one right here. Perfect. Okay, so that has all the edges pinned down. I'm gonna finish it off with another mist. Once that mist is done, I'm gonna then turn the fan on high, kind of point it more at the quilt to get good air on it. And then I'm gonna leave this, I normally leave it for a couple of hours depending on the size of the quilt. Uh, so this one will leave for a good amount of time to uh, let the fan go on it. We'll give you a time of how long it actually took to dry. Okay, so we've given the quilt ample drying time with the fan and with the ventilation in the room, along with, I just actually left this one overnight just to be completely sure that it was uh, ready to be uh, taken out with the pins. So now that's what I'm gonna do. I'm taking the pins out in the exact same order that I put them in. I don't really know if that means anything or if that changes or if there's a science behind it, but it works for me. So I'm just grabbing a bowl and I'm starting in the corner and then I'm just tossing my pins in the bowl or if you have a pin cushion that you wanna keep them in, you can do that as well. Coming up here to the last few pins, we'll take those out. And this part is all done, so now we can hold it up and show you, and then I'll give you a photo difference between the beginning before it was blocked and then after it was blocked. Alrighty, Mom, what did you think of the process? Oh, it turned out so good. So I remember this quilt, if you've been in our store, this has been hanging on our wall for a couple of years. A couple of years, yeah. And it always had its little wanky, you know, because, I mean, it didn't, it had hadn't to, blocked it yet. <laughs> it had a lot to do with the amount of tight quilting, is it? And that's what we talked about in the video. Yeah. A lot of tight quilting in a quilt brings in that fabric Correct. and takes it out of being square. Correct. Um, so blocking it gets it nice and flat again, uh, helps it lay beautifully. Yeah, so I can't wait to have so this back see. on the wall to see, if I can see get how that flat for it, you. can you get it? There we go. So nice, flat, nice lay. And then I've got pictures throughout the video as well that helps you kind of see the before and after. Awesome. So I, I can't wait to get job. it back on the wall. Thank I you. I know, it looks good. <laughs> Alrighty, well, we hope you enjoyed tonight's episode on how to block a quilt. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments below. We'll get those. And then of course, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with everything LEQ. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.